five tips for taking terrible dental pics. You're probably wondering who that guy is. For now, I'm gonna call him Bob. His name's actually Aaron, but I think he looks like a Bob. Anyway, I'm gonna let him introduce himself, but for now, a little backstory. I've been a clinical dental hygienist for, let's just say, over 20 years, and all the while, I've had an interest in creative things like photography, uh, photo editing, video editing, and YouTube when that came along. So naturally, I cyberstalk people that are doing creative things. <laughs> And so now with this burst YouTube project, it's my job to cyberstalk people that are doing creative things and then share some information that might be helpful to you. Now, when I first reached out to Bob, I mean Aaron, it was really just for my own curiosity. We struck up a conversation and interestingly enough, he works with a lot of dental practices all over the country. So we started chatting about marketing and dentists and clients and photography, video editing software, and then we found out that we have something in common. We have a shared love for awful before and after dental pics. So instead of having him talk about how to take the greatest before and after dental pics ever, I thought we'd do a slightly different spin on it. Take it away, Bob. I mean, Aaron. My name is Aaron. I'm with Product 13. I am Marketing content for them clients all over the country. You're in the office. You're taking pictures, setting up your pictures, having a stand on the wall, or maybe a special room for these photos. And you want to document your journey. At any stage of the process of compromising in this way, well, you can't go backwards. You can't all of a sudden, I need a better before picture. It's very happy to go to dumb work. So, you can't show what you did if you either didn't take a picture or if the picture has issues. So, today we're going to talk about five tips for taking terrible dental pics. <sighs> Number five, make sure you cut their heads off. I love it if more pictures get sent to me with their heads chopped off. It's really, really easy. All you have to do is go into menu settings and then just turn the grid off. You don't really need it. I mean, I know it's there so you can send in your composition to make sure there's plenty of space all the way around, so you, you know, you take the picture from the torso up, but why? Don't overcomplicate it, turn it off. It's really easy and it, it's one less thing you have to worry about. You just take the picture, you get what you get. Usually a dental assistant or a hygienist is taking photos because they're building a relationship with the patient and during that first visit, you often practice to make sure they get that first picture. It helps them with clothes, but it also is a tool that you can use for marketing down the road. Often when I'm designing and I'm doing an ad, and they wait till the last minute, they don't wait, they wait till like the last minute, and they want to use the location and they send you the photo. And they get it, and the head stops off. I mean, literally, like, like that right in the board. I don't even have an option to use the whole face. Or I get half an arm cut off, so I have to recreate an arm by duplicating this arm and putting it over here. You don't always have time to do that. Now, I can do that. It sounds like a fun project. The problem with that is you're going to have to have someone who knows how to use Photoshop that has a positive skill in order to fix that. Number four. Ooh, your life's taking out of focus pictures because I know I do. Yeah, it adds more character. So just don't even bother going back and checking the photos after you take it because when you've got a before and after picture down the road after you did all the work and then you find out, oh wow, I can't show this because I can't see anything. Having them come in a second or third time to take those before pictures again, if we have the operation, it's not annoying at all. Trust me, the patient will thank you because it's, you know, it's all about building relationships. What you can do, you know, after you take the photo, go back and you look at it in the screen and you can zoom in. And then when you zoom in, you can tell if it's in focus or not. If it's not in focus, perfect, you're done. Number three, stand really close to the wall because what you want are really hard wall shadows because the darker the shadow, the more emphasis is put on someone's smile. 
so you, you know you get to really see those curly whites. No one really cares about anything else. Hard shadows are king. So in order to achieve a hard shadow, make sure you have the flash going strong and have your patient stand directly on the wall. Normally it's like two feet away from the wall that will help reduce the shadows, but why would you want to do that? Just stand them against the wall, take the picture, and watch the magic happen. I mean, the teeth just come out. Number two, don't let anybody tell you that lighting is important. Basically, you want to overexpose the photo by getting as close as you can to your patient. When the flash goes off, it will whiten the whole face. It will remove lines and blemishes from their face, kind of giving that non-surgical face look. look. And that's just an add bonus. Cheers. And number one, and this is so important, if you really want to hide the horrible work you did on your patient's smile, don't be consistent. Take your before and after pictures in completely different locations. Take your before picture inside, maybe take your after picture outside, in the lobby, maybe in the hallway, maybe anywhere. This way, it's harder for them to identify what work actually got done. And if you really want to mess them up, make sure it's a glamour shot so they know what kind of Photoshop has been put in. Yeah, use more Photoshop. This way, the work that you did on them is so much more great. Yeah, good. Fake news. <laughs> That's it. I hope you guys learned a few things. If you got any questions, just let me know. Click on the link below. One of the most important things you can realize when you're seeing the before and after pictures is that they're not just going to be used. It's not just for the doctor to take them down. It helps with all forms of marketing. It can be internal marketing on the website. It can be used on a billboard, that can especially if it's really top marks looking photos. They're clear and crisp. They don't have dark shadows. That's not that far. You also can use them to close future sales. So when you're sitting in the consultation room and you've got a new patient who's been told about that before and after, and the previous patient because it represents an example of what that patient is looking for or needs work wise, you can help close that sale. If the photos do not represent the quality of your work in real life or the level of service that you provide, it's not doing your brand any justice. So I strongly recommend training of some kind because you don't have to be a photographer to learn some simple skills and we don't have to overcomplicate it because at the end of the day, your focus needs to be on your patients. I'm just a tool that you can use, and yes, I said I'm a tool, <laughs> so, to use so that you can learn how to use the camera more efficiently without having to be super technical. Now back to you, Charlotte. I don't know why, I want to call you Barb. Back to you, Barb. You know what's funny, Aaron? My mom's name is actually Barb, so you're not that far off. Thank you, Aaron, for your contribution to Burst TV. If any of you have questions for him, leave them in the comments below. Um, or you can stalk him on LinkedIn, just like I did, and you'll be able to find him very easily. <laughs> All right, everybody, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. If you've never been here before, please do hit the subscribe button. There's an ambulance going by. Or a fire truck. Fire truck. <laughs>